Hi, hello, everyone. everyone. Yes. So let me just quickly say hello to everyone first. Yes, and that's Hi. Hi. And that was Alan Yuan as well. But so so I want to just first say hello to everyone. Uh, I'm Po Shen Lo. I actually won't be here for the most of the live song because I'm actually out on the road giving talks again today. Uh, today, this is University of California, Berkeley. I guess this is what it looks like. Chalk boys are green. But first, I want to welcome everyone to our live song. We're really, really happy to collaborate with Math Kangaroo because the problems are just really good. And in particular, I see this is the levels three to four. Uh, it's actually really hard to find good problems for third graders and fourth graders. And somehow, sometimes those questions for third graders and, graders and fourth graders are just arithmetic problems, like 14 times 26. That's not very interesting. But the math kangaroo problems are much more thoughtful than that. And that's what you'll see today. It's always a great pleasure for us to collaborate officially with Math Kangaroo USA on this. And you can see already that the way to chat well, at least you can see some comments are appearing down here. The way to chat is to send messages to chat relay. And I do want to see, does this work for you guys? So please, if you're in the room, go and send a message to chat relay. If you're watching on YouTube, there's actually a Zoom link that you can join. Oh, yes, Avian, it is great to hear from you. Anthony, it's great to hear from you. This class is different from any class you've ever taken. You're supposed to talk. OK, and you have some amazing people to lead you. They'll actually introduce each other. But I've had the pleasure of getting to know both of them through this program. And with that, I'm going to turn it off to Alan and Gloria. Go for it. OK, uh, who's going for? Oh, I'm going first. OK, hi, guys. So my name is Alan. I'm actually supposed to introduce Gloria, though. Recording so, stopped. So let's do this. So Gloria is. Or Gloria has qualified for AIME or AMI, and she's attended the Texas Math Count State Competition since seventh grade. Okay, so she's a pretty dedicated mathlete, you know. She was the third best speaker and an octo finalist that's top 16 at the 2023 National Middle School Tournament of Champions in Lincoln Douglas. In her free time, she is an avid reader who likes to write poetry and listen to K-pop. So that's Gloria. Uh, Gloria, it's your turn now, I think. Okay, thank you for that amazing introduction, Alan. And just before I introduce Alan, just a quick reminder to change your username so it's not your actual name because we're going to be saving this, uh, we're gonna be saving the chat and the recording. Now on to introduce your amazing instructor for today, Alan. So Alan is actually a 2022 Math Counts national winner. And that's like amazing because Math Counts is a very, very competitive and very, very hard competition. He's also a 2023 mob qualifier, which means that he's like extremely good at math. He's like one of the best in the nation. And a 2024 IMO TST qualifier, which again means that he's extremely, extremely, extremely good at math. He's captain of his school math team as well as the co-captain of his computer science club, and he is inspiring forward in soccer. So everyone, let's say hi to Alan. Hi. Hey, Alan. Okay. Um, you know, th this, this screen switching thing is kind of weird. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get used to that. Let's see. Okay, so what do we have next? Gloria, you have your icebreaker, right? So we yes. can just get right into that. Yeah, so here we have an exciting icebreaker. It's snow amazing, right? Um, and it is, what is your favorite animal that lives in Australia? So let's see, I see a lot of answers coming in the chat. Um, it looks like they're not exactly up, but yeah, this is your time to type in the chat relay, which is gonna be displayed on our screens about your favorite animal. And like always, we have, since it's, you know, Matt Kangaroo, we have the classic answer of a kangaroo. So what's your favorite animal that lives in Australia, Alan? You know, you know, it might just be the kangaroo, I'm going to be honest. It <laughs> might just be the kangaroo. Uh, you know, I, I think, um, I think my favorite breed of kangaroo, actually, you know, it might just be the math kangaroo. The math kangaroo is a pretty good one. I'm going to be honest. That's uh, what, what is your favorite breed of kangaroo? Or what, what is your, what is, what is your favorite, what is your favorite animal in Australia? Well, my favorite animal in Australia is the koala and it's 
because koalas are extremely cute. Um, plus, it's also kind of like not really that big of a reason, but the old elementary school I went to had like a koala as a mascot. So that gives me two reasons for why the koala is my favorite animal. Um, I see, yeah, people do agree that koalas are cute. Yeah, right? Kang kangaroos are amazing, but koalas are cuter. And that is my opinion, my humble opinion. Okay. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I cannot actually see the chat, so like, oh, that helps. Wait, okay, I can see the chat now. Okay, so there's actually a moderation panel and I couldn't see it, but now I can see it. Okay, that works. Um, so Gloria, are we are we gonna start doing math now, or you want to keep talking yeah. about koalas, or okay? Um, well, you know, like kangaroos, I think it's time for us to jump into the math problem for today. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so here is the first oh. problem. Uh, okay, uh, we want to read the question or I can, I can read the question if that's fine. Um, you know, we've already gone six minutes in, so we might as well, you know, get straight into it. Uh, okay, in the pictures, each dot stands for one. And each bar stands for five. For example, I don't know how to read that, stands for eight. Which picture stands for 12? Okay. Uh, Gloria, do you have any ideas on how to solve this? Well, let's see. Well, we're trying to find out which one stands for 12, right? So maybe we could just try to break 12 down into fives and ones and then figure out which table has a number of bars and dots corresponding to the number of fives and ones we have? Hmm. That See. sounds like a very 200 IQ idea. I like it a lot. Okay, so how are we going to break down 12 into fives and ones? Who, hmm. who is well, saying anything? I think a lot of people are talking in the chat. Um, a lot of C's, and I think Anthony mentioned that C, because 5 plus 5 is 10, and 1 plus 1 is 12. So what this means is that since we have two 5's and two 1's, right, because 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 1, 11, plus 1 is 12, we have two bars and two dots. Okay, this is kind of a short bar, but we'll, we'll make the bar longer. Okay, so, so the we... answer, wow. Oh, I interrupted. That's my bad. You can continue. It's fine. Go ahead, Alan. Okay, I was just going to comment that the answer is C, right? And I also wanted to comment, this looks like a face. I just it wanted does. to point that out. You know? like Wait. I keep thinking like a toad or a frog, but we're making I was duck. thinking. I, I was thinking me when I wake up in the morning because, you know, I don't want to get out of bed. <laughs> like, you know, I, I have a very straight face when I'm bored or I'm irritated, you know, so like, this is basically me. See, I put my spirit into this problem and that's why the answer is C, you know? Yeah, so yeah, so, it, you know, you can see your face when you wake up in the morning. Um, you know, okay. yeah, that's actually really genius. You know, we're, we're obvious comedians here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, do you wanna move on to the next question or yeah. are we good? Okay. Yeah, and you guys can see here that the answer is indeed C. So um, that's pretty. Yeah, genius. you guys are gonna have to kind of have to put up with my um, amazing puns for a while. <laughs> so um, it might it's be really... a long ride, but for some, it might be very short. Okay. So I just I, actually I have the questions all pulled up, so you guys will have to just like uh, refer to my screen and hope you don't like forget the question when Gloria is talking. But this is the next one. There are two holes in the cover of a book. When the book is open, it looks like this. I can't read that. Which pictures does Olaf see through the holes when he closes the book? So, ideas? Hmm. Well, let's see. We see the book, right? It has like a spiral thing right over here. So this means that... I'm going to use my hands to do kind of a demonstration. Okay, hold up. Okay, wait. Yeah, wait, yeah, so it's like this. And so when we close the book, it's gonna close like this, right? So it's gonna go from here like that. And then, right, so 
does this it kind of gives you like a visual right so it's, the book is going to open and close like this and then so this is the front side of the book so we're going to need to see which pictures will we be able to see on the front side of the book right so which pictures will be visible um wait sorry on the back side of the book sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah isn't it like this sort of or like yeah this yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i wasn't sure if i was just like trolling okay um what are people saying in chat this is a this is a very interesting yeah um well i see like a lot of people are putting in several answers um and i think anthony pointed out something really nice is that each kind of square is kind of like a two by two right And this is a two by two square, but you might be like, that one's a rectangle. That is not a square. And you guys are indeed correct. But Anthony is also correct because we can split this rectangle, which is a two by four, into a two by two. Right? Okay, maybe I should use a different color. Okay, yeah. So we can split this two by four rectangle into two two by two squares. Like so. Okay, huh. we split it now. Alan, we split it. We have amazing two by two squares. What do we do now? Um, okay, so wait, let me let me make sure I understood what just happened. So you you said we split each of oh that's that's kind of bad. Hold on, let me change my pen color real quick. Uh okay. So uh did that work? Okay, so we split the uh stuff on the right into five two by twos. Is that what you said? I kind of zoned out there. Um could you That's repeat fine. or uh Yeah, sure. So we split this into two by twos, right? Because all of oh. these kind of car pictures are two by in two by two squares. So splitting this up into two by two will help us kind of better visualize how these white boxes or the holes correspond to uh not tractors, but the vehicle on the front. Oh, okay. So that makes more sense. Uh I just wasn't listening. So if we split all of these two by tens on each side into five two by twos, you guys probably see uh, what's about to happen here. So if I flip this over, the far side box over here is going to go to this tractor thing on the right. And then the second box is going to go to, I don't know what a, this bigger car, right? And then this final empty box is going to go to this bike. So it's basically just the bike. Oh my gosh, this is not readable. Okay, the bike, the big car, and then the tractor. Does that make or, sense? Or, yeah, and or if you guys can't quite see the um, pictures, it's the blue one, the orange one, and the pink one. Yeah. Also... Did anyone okay let me clear uh let me clear everything real quick. I just want to see if anyone got tricked. Did anyone think that you just shift the entire boxes over? Did anyone put red, blue, and orange by any chance? Or did that not happen? Okay. So you guys you guys are pretty smart then. Um I, I actually put red, blue, and orange at the start. Uh, Gloria, I don't know if you did that. You're probably smart enough to like not do that. I'm pretty dumb. So, you know, I, I made that mistake. I would have missed this one if I had actually done it. So, you know. Nui, I would have missed it too. But then I was like talking and then I noticed like, why? Wait, why, why is there something black in the middle? And I was like, oh, it's a spiral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like this, this happens so often, honestly, like, you know sillies it happens so often i'm just used to it at this point it's just it's just over for me you know um okay so the answer is the bike the big car and the tractor so, so which one is that um it's d right so blue orange and pink cool oh uh, is that right and... yeah it is right oh yeah. we're geniuses so yeah Look at that. great job everyone yeah i saw a lot of you guys putting answers in chat so keep on doing that we want to keep on seeing y'all's participation y'all are like really amazing and really smart um yes i said y'all so um yeah and you guys oh i saw a lot of you guys put in the correct answers so great job to everyone
Oh, oh, I have to move. Okay. Yeah, next problem. Next problem. Okay, I will read the thing. Three people walked across a field of snow. Are you guys seeing this? Three people walked across a field of snow, weary, muddy shoes. I don't think that's correct grammar, actually. So, you know, maybe maybe this is the hard part of the problem. I need to correct this real quick. Give me a second. Okay. Maybe. Let me let me get my white marker out. Uh, wearing, <laughs> wearing muddy shoes. Not, that was go. a hard part, guys. All right. Now, now, now let's get to the now let's get to the easy part. Okay. Wearing muddy shoes. In which order did they do this? So, Gloria, do you have any ideas? Hmm. Well, let's see. We need to find the order, right? And so maybe we could look at kind of like the diagram, right? So in the diagram, there are some shoes which are on top of other the shoe prints. So maybe the shoe with the shoe prints, right? This overlap might tell us that which shoe went in which order. So hmm, I see that the top shoe, right, is a shoe that doesn't have anything covering it. So we're able to see its prints very visibly. So hmm, Alan, which shoe is that? Uh, so you said the shoe that doesn't have anything covering it, right? Yeah. Okay, I, I zoned out again. I was on Discord. Sorry, I'm a Discord nerd, you know, so uh, that's my bad. Anyway, the shoe that doesn't have anything covering it. So I'm actually going to go up here and I'm going to call this shoe one. I'm going to call this shoe two and I'm going to call this shoe three. Just for convenience, right? Um, and yeah, so uh, you guys are all saying this, but the shoe that is not being covered by anything is actually shoe one. And you can just see this by looking, let's say, at this spot. Shoe one is actually covering shoe two right here. And then if you look at this bottom spot, shoe two, or sh no, shoe three is being covered by shoe one there. And then in the bottom spot, shoe two is being covered by shoe three so shoe one is the one that's not being covered by anything and that means shoe one was the last one right very good um okay uh gloria do you do you know what to do from here because i'm stuck um well definitely right so we know that shoe one is the one that's not covered so it must be the last one walking and we know that shoe one is the one that's like an oval with like three or sorry two little circles in it because it actually looks like eyes but um that's fine uh because you know we're gonna use our eyes to see the shoe that looks like this right um, and so since we know it's the last one and it's asking us for the order that they walked in we know that the shoe that looks like this must come in last so let's look at the answer choices and quickly eliminate those that don't work. Okay, so this one doesn't work, this one doesn't work, and this one doesn't work. That means that B, E, and D both aren't the correct answer choices. So that leaves us with two, A and C. So now what we need to do is determine which one of these two shoes, the striped one or the, like, the really small dot one, walks first, and which one walks second. So I remember talking about overlaps, right? So we know that the shoes which walk after another shoe must overlap with the first shoe. And that's a lot of shoes. So I'm going to kind of reword it, right? So let's say shoe A and shoe B. If shoe B walks after shoe A, then shoe B must cross over shoe A's tracks. So which one of the shoes in the diagram does this, Alan? Oh, no, I zoned out. Wait, hold on. So I'm pretty sure shoe three is crossing shoe two's tracks. Therefore, shoe three comes after shoe two. And that means the answer is two, three, one. Am I, am I right or am I right? 
Uh, I think you're right. Or not lying. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, that was, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, Alan, right? Because we know that three crosses two and three is the one stripes, right? So that means we need to have like a lot of dots, the ones with a lot of dots coming first and then the one with stripes coming first, right? So we can cross out C because the one with stripes comes before the one with dots and that's not correct, which leaves us with the answer choice of A, and yeah, so I do see that a lot of you guys have been putting in the answers, right? Yeah, um, so great job guys, and a lot of A's, right? I can see that you guys have A answer. Wait, that's not proper English grammar, but for now we will say I can see that you guys have a lot of, wait, I can see that you guys have A answer, you know, for the sake of the joke, guys, for the sake of the joke. And answer, actually. Actually, it's an, not A. I just wanted to point that out. Okay. Um. Next question, I guess. Are you? Are you guys? Do you guys want us to like speed up or slow down or like? Because I I I can tell a lot of you guys are really smart. Because like you you guys were spamming the answers there for like five minutes straight. Uh. Okay. We we might go a little faster. Okay. Does that sound good, Gloria? Or. Yeah. Definitely. Let's okay. increase, let's, let's slam down on the gas pedal. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's yeah. slam down on the gas pedal. Yeah. Let's slam Remember down on the kangaroo. Yeah. Slam down on the yes. kangaroo, you know? Let's okay. Let's jump a bit quicker. <laughs> Very true. Okay, so let's move on to which one? Okay, I, this, this is cool. Okay. Uh, okay, I should read it. What number should replace the question mark when all the calculations are completed correctly. And once again, I can't read the picture, so you'll just have to use your eyes. Okay, Gloria, do you have any ideas? Well, yeah. So we see that there are like a lot of calculations here, right? There's like a two plus one and a zero plus bank, blah, not bank, but blank, right? Um, but so maybe we can kind of do the calculations which we know first. And we know that two plus one is, right, three, because one cookie plus two cookies is three cookies. So Cookie Monster is happy. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have three, right? So now we figured out this blank, Alan. What other blank can we figure out? So if you look at the one that's in the bottom left, then it turns out one plus blank equals nine. So obviously the thing in the blank is just eight, right? But actually, there's another blank we know. The top right one, we know that because zero plus three is equal to three. So now I'm sure you guys can do the final calculation. I will let Gloria do the honors here, you know, for the glory. Well, I, That's yeah. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan, for giving me the glory of doing um, this amazing math problem. We're finishing up. So I see a lot of you guys have already figured it out because you guys are like really smart math geniuses. And so we have eight minus three, which is an extremely hard problem to do, I'm sure, right? So eight minus three is five. So that means that this blank is five. And since we have five answer choices, right? We can pick the answer choice that has five in it, which is B, which I see a lot of you guys are putting in. So good okay. job, guys. It is B, look at that. That's pretty yeah. smart. Continue to right. be smart, guys. Be smart, you know? Okay, next one. Anyways, Dennis wants to remove one cell from the shape. How many of the shapes below can he get? Any ideas? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, well, we have a lot of shapes, one big shape and then a lot of other possible shapes down here, right? So, hmm, well, there's like this L shape kind of thing. Can we somehow get that by removing a square, Alan? Uh, okay, so it doesn't look immediate that I can get the L shape, right? Because if, oh, if I draw out the L shape, it doesn't actually look like it's going to fit anywhere in here but just playing around if i if i delete this oh, if i delete this one here then i can actually get the l shape because this shape here if i rotate it 90 degrees then it's going to become the oh it's going to become the l shape so actually 
I can get the L shape. So that works. Yay, okay, so we figured out that this one works. So we know that at least one shape must work. So let's put a tally or let's just check mark it. All right, onto this weird kind of Tetris shape, I guess. Um, yeah, so if any of you guys play Tetris, you know that this is sometimes a lifesaver. But okay, now moving on to the actual math part. Um, so we have this kind of weird blocky thingy. I'm going to call it the Tetris block. Okay, so we have the Tetris block. And we can actually get this Tetris block by rotating it again. So if we rotate this Tetris block to look like this, you can see that it actually pretty much matches up with this diagram because all we need to do is get rid of this block right here. So this Tetris shape actually works. Now let's move on to our kind of Z shape, tree shape. I'm not sure what to call it. But anyways, Alan, can we get this shape from the diagram? Um, looking at it, I can see one spot where you might be able to. Let me quickly erase um stuff. Oh, no. Okay, let me actually just draw it on the side then. So I think I can get this. And the reason is, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to understand since there's so much clutter, but this little, oh, this little shape here, I think we can get C from that shape because I can rotate that shape 90 degrees, these four squares, and it's going to become that shape that you see in answer choice C. Uh, this is really terrible. I need to figure out how to erase this stuff. Um, but yeah, you can get C. I think you guys um, can see that. Can see that. You know? Uh, anyway, so Gloria, can we get answer choice D? Sure. Um, let's take a look, right? We have this kind of... Two by two square, right? And let's see. So this means that all of the squares need to be right next to each other. And looking at this, it doesn't really seem like all of the squares are right next to each other, right? Because we do have something like kind of curve thing right over here, right? But there's no, so we can try to make a two by two like this, but that won't work because this part doesn't have a square. We could try to make like a two by two over here. That's a funky looking square. But anyways, it won't work anyways because there's no square over here. And drawing another square, okay, this looks better than the last one, um, won't work either, right? Because this isn't a two by two because there's no square over here. So unfortunately, it looks like we won't be able to draw a square over here. And since we're really sad about it, we're square. Dang, that was funny. Okay, so yeah, you cannot get answer choice D. Answer choice E, I will just do that real quick. Uh, you can see that there's really no four in a row appearing anywhere in here. So it's just not going to work. So answer choice E does not work as well. So D and E don't work, but A, B, and C do work. And that means that we have three shapes. So the answer yeah. should be C. Yeah. Is that right? Then, yes. Yeah. So we can see the answer now, and it is C, right? Let's go. All right. Um, next question, I guess. We should probably go a little faster, don't you think? I mean, half our Maybe, time yeah. is gone. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's, yeah, let's, let's speed it up a bit, you know, let's speed it up a bit. Um, yeah. Ooh, so, so the dogs. The weight of the dog toy is a whole number. How much does one dog toy weigh? So how are we okay. going to do this one? Right, maybe we can take a look at the scales. And this scale, this 12 kilograms, I'm gonna write it at the top, it might be kind of hard to see. Right, so we have 12 kilograms and 10 kilograms. And this 12 kilograms is much heavier than the weight of a dog, right? So what we immediately know is that the dog weight, I'm just gonna call the dog, I guess, D, right? The weight of the dog, actually it's called W. So the weight of the dog has to be less than 12, right? And this is a variable, guys. It's just like something that, uh, let's think of it as like a placeholder for the value or the number that we're trying to find, right? And we see over here that the weight of two dogs is much heavier than 20 kilograms, which means that since the weight of one dog is W, the weight of two dogs would be two W. 
So that means 2w must be greater than 20. All right, Alan, we have these kind of two inequalities. What can we do with them? Okay, so I actually put a dog there, but I will use w because that, that is probably more efficient. So let's look at what we know other than those inequalities. We know that the weight is a whole number. So fancy term integer, right? So we know that the weight of the dog is less than 12. So it's something in the set one, two, three, you know, all the way to 11, right? But the weight of the dog, but twice the weight of the dog is greater than 20. So we also know it's more than 10. So that means it's something in 11, 12, all the way to like infinity, right? But look at the intersection of these two sets like the only possible weight of the dog using those inequalities is 11. So I think the answer is E. Does that seem right? Yeah, that definitely looks right, right? Oh, wait, right, right. Okay, not <laughs> okay. to say right, guys. But anyways, okay. um, yeah, because looking at this one, right, we know that w has to be greater than zero because you can't have a weight that's like negative one, right? Imagine like go, imagine the doctor saying, you know, after checking the scale, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna call, you know, I'm sorry, Bob, but your weight is like negative 12, right? That's not a thing, guys. Um, it would be really funny if it was a thing, but it's not. So w has to be greater than zero or the weight of the dog has to be greater than zero, right? Um, so we have all of these choices from one to 11 because remember, it's also less than 12. But the only w, right, the only two w that's greater than 20 is if w is equal to 11, which is what we see right here at e. And I see a lot of you guys have been putting in 11 and e. So yeah, great job, guys. And look at the magical answer key. Gives us that it is indeed e. So good job, guys. Yes. Oh, we're geniuses. Oh, OK. Um, moving on, I think. OK. Uh, Stephen wants to write each of the digits two, zero, one, and nine in one of the boxes of the sum below. He wants to get the largest possible answer. Which digits can he write instead of the question mark? Hmm. Well, mm, let's do some trial and error, right? Um, this is the hundred. Well, first off, let's identify what we know. This is the hundredth place, the tenth place, and the ones place, and this is also the ones place, right? So if we have 100, if we have 100 over here, it's always going to be bigger than nine, right? If we put nine here. So maybe that means that we need to put like the biggest number in the hundredth place, and then maybe the smallest number in the ones place. What do you think, Alan? Uh, right. So if we do want to get the largest possible answer, then it makes sense that in the three digit number, because it's three digits, it's going to be much bigger than that one digit number. And obviously, like, if I put a nine here, then it's going to be like 900 something, which is way better than, say, putting like 200 here, right? Like, I obviously want a nine to be in that spot. So yeah, I would say the hundreds place, definitely a nine. So Gloria, how do you think we should proceed from here? Well, we have our number bank, right? With 201, hey, it's also 2019. Okay, I did not know this stuff, but now I do. Okay. Um, yeah, so we have nine, right? Which is our largest number, but we've already used that and we can't use it twice. Um, I wish we could use it twice, but we can't. So we can cross that off the number bank. Now let's look at the numbers that we have left. They're two, zero, and one. And we can use our previous logic to say that we want the second largest number or the largest number that's now available to be in this place. And looking at our choices of two, zero, one, it's pretty obvious that two is greater than zero and it's also greater than one. So we know that we want two to go over here. Now, Alan, we know that we've already used nine, two, so we're left with zero and one. What should go in this place? Well, I would say because that last blank is also in the ones place and we only have two options left we can probably just try both the options right so we know that a two goes here and then 
right here, it's either a one and a zero or a zero and a one. So I'm really just left with nine, two, one plus zero and nine, two, zero plus one. But these are both equal to 921. And that means the largest possible answer is 921. And I actually have two solutions, right? One of the solutions is a zero and the other solution is a one. So actually, uh, Gloria, you can do the honors, I think. All right. Thank you again for giving me the glory of finishing up this problem. So we see that both zero and one work, right? Because, you know, we're basically just switching them and it all gives us the answer to 91, which leads us to answer choice A, because it's either zero or one. And I do see it's that me. a lot of you guys have been putting in the answer. Yeah. And once again, you know, we're going to disregard English grammar for a second and say that I'm glad to see all of you guys have A answer. Um, again, Alan, disregarding English grammar for a second. Okay, so, um, oh, I shouldn't say that. Anyway, yeah, is the answer A? Um, let's see. It is A. Okay, I think Gloria really got the glory there, you know? That's pretty big brain. Um, let's move on. Oh, my gosh, I can't read that. Uh. So here's the question, guys. Together we cost five cents. Together, <laughs> together we cost seven cents. Together we cost 10 cents. How much do we cost together? So that's the question statement, guys. So Gloria, what do you think we should do here? Um, well, you know, we have apple and pear, banana and apple pear and a banana and here they just look really peachy right everything's peachy over here um right we have a banana pear and an apple so maybe right we know that these two together they cause five cents the banana and the apple will cost seven cents the pear and the, ban the banana cost 10 cents and we need to figure out how much they cost all together so hmm, is there maybe we could do something like addition subtraction Maybe something like that, Alan? What do you think? So I think we should put some variables to this, you know? So, you know, the classic trick will just assign letters to the costs of each of our three characters. So the banana here, we'll call it B. The pear, we'll call it P. And the apple, we'll call A. So the apple and the pear cost five. The banana and the apple cost seven. Oh, and the banana and the pear cost 10. And what we want is A plus B plus P. So actually, I just made that more complicated. Um, okay, Gloria, do you have any other ideas? I am I am all out, I think. I am not all sure right. what to do here. That's fine. Um, I thought your idea was great. Um, you know, like great and great. Um, so, right, we know that, you know, if we add all of these up, right, like the A, like the equations that Alan wrote on the screen, where A plus P is equal to 5, where A is for apple, P is for pear, B plus A is equal to 7, which is banana plus apple equals 7 cents, and we have, sorry, P plus B, which is pear plus banana is equal to 10 cents, right? And we see that if we add up all of these equations together, we get a really gigantic equation, but not too gigantic, right? In fact, we're going to put them all in a basket, right? We call it a fruit basket. Um, and we're going to get 2a plus 2b plus 2p is equal to 5 plus 7 is 12, 12 plus 10 is 22, right? So we get 2a plus 2b plus 2p equals 22, which means that an apple plus a banana plus a pear gives us, or sorry, two apples plus two bananas plus two pears gives us 22 cents. Okay, how do we proceed from here, Alan? Okay, that actually made so much sense, you know. So we know that, right, like you said, apple, uh, pe pear, uh, and banana equals 22. But look. If I split this in half, I have two groups of apple, banana, pear. 
So every single group is 11 cents. Look at that. That's genius. Okay, so the answer must be 11. That's what I think. Is this correct? All right, so we're gonna put in our shoes and run really quickly to the answer like we run a 7-Eleven. Um, and we're gonna rest the answer and yes, it is indeed 11 cents or D. So great job, you guys. Again, I saw a lot of you guys putting a lot of answers in the chat. So you guys are amazing. Keep that up. Yahoo. Next. Okay. Um, my my uh omniscient um subconscious is telling me to look more at the camera, so I'll try to do that. Um, yeah. Let's go to the next question. Anna used thirty two small white squares to frame a seven by seven picture. How many of these small white squares does she need to frame a ten by ten picture? You know, so I'm how. This picture is looking pretty picturesque. Okay, I'll leave it. I'll, I'll hand it back to you, Alan. Okay. Um, what is this saying? Oh, okay. So what it's saying here, I don't know if you can actually see this, is there are, like, it's very hard to see, but there's a frame around this picture, and I'm just drawing it out here. So it goes all the way around, and then it goes down, and then around here, and then up. So what it's saying is there are 32 of those squares. And it's asking how many I need to frame a 10 by 10 picture. So um, Gloria, how am I going to do this? Um, well, really what we could do, I guess, is that we could just count, right? Um, but maybe there's like a smarter way to do it. So is there a way where we could count smartly, Alan? Um, you know, I'm thinking, so you know how in this seven by seven picture, they actually took the time and effort to draw out all 49 of the squares, right? But what I can actually just do is, oh, what I can actually, oh, am I writing on my face? I am. Uh, let's not worry about that. Hopefully, hopefully my, wait, I shouldn't say that. Hopefully my yellow doesn't like block out that yellow. Um, so I'm just going to move out of here for a moment. Uh, so I know that's a seven, right? And then I have a border here. And that border is actually looks like this, right? There's like four corner squares. And then there are edges here. So how would I handle that? Um, I need some help here again. All right, no problem, Alan. I'm gonna swoop in and join in on the fun. So we see that, we know that this is already, right, a seven by seven um, picture. And this picture uses 32 smaller frames, right? Or wait, yeah, so it's seven by seven picture and there are 32, um, kind of small white things to, you know, frame this seven by seven picture. And what's really cool is that we know that this seven by seven, right, is actually, you know, we, when it has a total number of 49 squares, right? Because we're basically finding the area and seven squared, oh, okay, that is not seven, but um, seven squared is equal to 49. Right? And 49 plus 32 is equal to 81, which is the total number Ooh. of squares that we have used in this problem. Right? So including the frame and including the picture rest picture. Um, so, hmm. Well, something curious that I've noticed is that 81 is 9 squared. Not 9 cubed, guys. That's very big. But 9 squared. Right? And the number of tiles on the side is also nine. And, you know, nine is seven plus two. And there are two, you know, ones added onto the side, right? Because we have this original border of seven, uh, seven right over here, but we're gonna add a one on the top and we're gonna add a one on the bottom, right? So we're gonna plus one, plus one, right? To get nine. So maybe we could use something like this idea and apply it to the 10 by 10. What do you think, Alan? 
Yeah, so I actually did not think of that at all at the start. So I can see um, a few people said they're a little confused. So let me just clarify what is going on here. So you have a 10 by 10 square, right? And then you have a frame of one squares around it. So if I combine the frame and the 10 by 10 square, then what I get is a 12 by 12 square. So the area of the frame is actually just going to be the area of the frame and the inner square, which is 12 squared, minus 10 squared. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. I don't think you can. Um, Let me move that out real quick. So the area is 12 squared minus 10 squared of the frame. And so that would be 44. I don't know if that makes sense, but... uh. Is that the answer? I don't know. This was kind of a weird explanation. So, um, audience, does that make sense? I need some help here. Hmm. Well, let's see. It looks like you guys are saying, yeah, it makes sense, right? Okay, yeah. So, just a quick recap because these are like one by one squares and this is 10, right? This length is going to be one, this length is going to be one also. This length on the top is going to be one, and the length on the bottom is also going to be one. So it's going to be like a border of ones all around the square, right? So the total length is going to be 12. It's kind of a weird looking square, but we're going to roll with it, guys. So like again, uh, like Alan said before, 12 squared is 144, right? And the area inside here with the 10 by 10 is 10 Q, or no, not, no, I don't know. I'm so obsessed with cubes today, guys. Now, maybe it's because we're 3D and this is 2D, but I need to stay in the 2D realm. So we have 10 squared, right? Because it's a 10 by 10 squared. So 10 squared is equal to 10, oh, or 100. And like Alan said, 144 minus 100, it gives us the magical answer of 44, right? And it looks like 44 is the, wait, pun in, pun in, sorry, pun in progress. Uh, 44 is the answer for this problem. Um, yeah. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, that was really funny. I'm actually rolling on the floor laughing after that one. But is 44 the answer? C? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. That is very good. Now let's move on to the next one. After um, I, I botched that explanation and Gloria saved me from that one. So, you know. Big thanks to her. Anyway, a hallway has the dimensions shown in the picture. A cat walks on the dashed line along the middle of the hallway. How many meters does the cat walk? Oh, the cat walk. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> I, guess, anyway. I guess it's a model now. Wait. <gasps> wait, wait. Okay, so it's a cat walk, and I guess the cat is a model now right because we have like a model here yeah okay back to you alan oh okay actually i was gonna say do you have any ideas so you can start it off this time since you're better at explaining you know and then we'll see um what i can what i can help with all right thanks alan for that amazing compliment okay so let's just maybe we should do like a zoom in on the diagram but can you guys see the diagram is it clear yes no can i get a yes no really quickly uh Okay. All right. Thank you for the yes, Lawrence. So, um, you know, first instinct, well, you know, it's all kind of horizontal, right? So we have a 28 up here. So why don't we just do like 28 plus maybe like we do the six, right? To account for this top portion plus 20, right? So we do 28 plus six plus 20 and this bottom portion, right? Let's do a 28 plus six plus 20 plus 40, right? Let's add all of these numbers up together to get 60 plus 34, you get 94. And that must be the answer, right, guys? What? Wait. I think you are wrong. Hmm. Wait, you are right, right? Because 94 is actually the wrong answer because first, it's not in the answer choices, so it must be wrong. And also, because if we look closely, right, this 28 and 40 have some has some overlap. 
specifically this kind of tiny part right over here. That's where they overlap. And additionally, the six meters and the 20 meters, the cat doesn't walk 26 meters kind of vertically, right? In fact, it doesn't even walk this top portion or this bottom portion either. So this 20 plus six is also incorrect. Hmm. Well, Alan, we found out why 94 isn't actually the correct answer. So how can we find the correct answer? Right, so what I think you're trying to do here if my puny brain understands, is find the horizontal distance that the cat walks and then add it to the vertical distance the cat walks. So to find that little intersection, like this little, I don't know what you're going to, like um, this inner strip, then we have to look at this length here. So this length is 36 meters, and then this bottom length is 40 meters. So that means that the inner length here is actually going to be four meters. So that is the length of that inner strip. But now I still need to figure out the horizontal distance the cat walks. So Gloria, how am I going to do that? Hmm. Well, we need to figure out the horizontal distance, which is just like the cat walking left and right, right? Um. Oh, left and right, right? Okay, wait, pun not intended, but maybe it was like, you know, a wonderful pun. So we have 36, right, for kind of this portion. And if we add four, right, or sorry, we have 36 for this portion, and we need to add kind of 28, right? So we have 36 plus 28, right, because we get like, we get this whole portion of 40, right? But 40 and 28 have the overlap of this yellow part right over here. So we do 40 minus 4 to get 36, and then we add 28 onto it. And you might be like, wait, how come 36 and 28 don't overlap? And this is because if we kind of shift this 36 line up here, right, we get something like this. Because 36 ends right at this line, right? And this kind of really thick yellow line over here is also where 28 ends. So it's where 36 ends and 28 starts, and also where 28 stops and 36 ends, or no, wait, 26. So wait, basically, they just like, instead of overlapping like this, right, they just touch each other perfectly like this. So we get 36 plus 28 for horizontal distance. Now, Alan, how do you find the vertical distance? Okay, so I think I understand what to do now. So to find the vertical distance, actually, what we can see is because the cat is halfway along, I can draw this little section over here on the right. And I know that that's going to be three meters. So this is three meters here. And now the bottom section, if I draw that, well, I know that this is four meters. So essentially, I just need to figure out what this little section here is going to be. And I will be done with the question. Hold on. I'm being stupid again. Wait, guys, 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 very important. Okay. Pretend I did not say anything just then. And I will give you a very good solution. So I know that the total height here is 26 meters. And then I know that this height here is three meters. Finally, I know that this height here is four meters. And what you'll notice is the total vertical height plus this and plus this is equal to the full height. And what that means is 3 plus 4 plus vertical is equal to 26. So the vertical is 19. Did that make sense? Audience? Yes? No? I feel like a genius now, you know. Uh. Oh, no. Uh. Clearly, my explanation did not work. Uh, Gloria, could could you could you save me again? I need some, I need some help here. You know. Sure. Um, no problem. So what Alan noticed is that we know that twenty right, twenty meters goes from this here 
all the way down here. Wait, let me switch my pen color to kind of draw. So the 20 meters is going to go from here all the way to here. And that's like the whole yellow scribble. And that length of the yellow scribble is 20 meters. And also the smaller yellow scribble is six meters, right? So 20 plus six is 26, which means the total height of this kind of weird backward Z or two thing is 26 meters, which is why there's a 26 over here. So that's the total height of this model. But the cat doesn't walk the total height or length of this model, right? Because if you notice that this kind of dotted line, there's a distance. There's a gap right over here, and there's a gap right over here. So we need to account for those gaps. And the way we do that is by finding the length of those gaps. And like Alan cleverly found out, it's basically the length divided by two, right? But be careful, it's not 26 divided by two, but rather it's the smaller parts divided by two, right? We know that this length or the height of the top part is six, and six divided by two is three. So the length, um, the half length, or the length that the cat doesn't walk is three meters. And we also know that the length of this half smaller part down here, right, is eight meters because it says so right here. And we need to divide eight by two to get four. So we also know that this bottom portion or the circle part where the cat doesn't walk is four meters. So we have our total length, right, right over here, but we need to subtract the part that the cat doesn't walk. So we have 26 minus four minus three because the four comes from the bottom portion and the three comes from the top to get 26 minus seven, which again, just gives us 19. So does that make a bit more sense, guys? Yes, no in the chat? Yes, no, okay. Um, all right, yeah, okay, great. It looks like that made a bit more sense. So now, Alan, this time I'm going to give you the glory to finish up this problem. Okay, so I think this last bit is simple addition if I'm not missing something. So I know the horizontal length is 36, plus 28 from earlier. So horizontal is 64. And then the vertical, as Gloria just calculated, is 19. So the total number of meters that the cat walks is going to be 64 plus 19 equals 83E. I think this is the answer. I think it's right. Let's see right. if this works. Let's take Slide. a look at our omniscient magical answer key. We're gonna slide into it, and yes! All right, it is easy. Yes. All right, great job, guys, we did it. Okay, Um. actually, we didn't finish all the questions we were due to finish, but, you know, it is, it is, um, it is 6.57 in my time. So I think we are nearing the end. I think we are nearing the end, guys. That is, yeah. that is, that is incredible. Um. So, Gloria, do you have any final comments? Um, No, except that you guys were awesome today, right? You guys, you know, we solved a lot of problems together, some tricky ones, such as the wary shoes. Right? I'm sure you guys are all wary from this amazing math time, right? Um, You guys were great. You guys were awesome, you know, really smart. So I really hope you guys, you know, do math or continue to do math. Um, Yeah, and if you guys, you know, are able to do math kangaroo, you know, definitely do math kangaroo. It's an awesome competition. I would also like to promote the um the rest of the live courses, you know, because I am a I am a worker for live now. Therefore, it's my duty to promote the rest of the live classes. And I am saying that you should take all of the classes so that you can learn a lot of math and then we can be happy that you are learning math. So you should definitely take all of the classes so that you can learn some more math, okay? That is my final comment. That's yeah. pretty big, bro. Also, yeah, live has like a lot of amazing instructors who will teach you amazing math like we did today, right? It's gonna be wonderful. It's gonna be amazing, right? Um, Actually, live, and yeah, and if you go to live and you take our courses, our courses will make you feel alive, right? Because math is amazing. Yeah, these are really funny jokes, guys. As you can tell, people who do math, they grow to be very, very charismatic. So you should do math too. And then when you grow up, you will be able to like 
you will you will be able to tell your grandchildren that you lived through an amazing time and it was a great time to be alive it was a Yes. great time to be alive Yeah, very in true fact, yeah, all the people are alive. You're going to enjoy it so much because all the people are alive are very lively. yeah okay um it is it is seven o'clock now so i don't know how to end this stuff off but if you would like to leave now i don't know is professor low coming back i'm not sure Well, anyways, you guys can leave now, um, but you guys did great today. In fact, I would go so far as to say that y'all ate, um, right? If you guys get the reference, you get the reference. Um, yeah, so y'all ate amazing. You guys were amazing. Um, so happy to have all of y'all here. Um, but this is, again, eight, so feel free to leave. Um, I know you guys don't want to leave. Very sad that we've reached the end of it, but we will have more amazing kind of live map solves, so make sure to keep an eye out for those. Goodbye. Bye, guys. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Okay. Love, bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Whoa. Goodbye. Oh, and good evening. Wait, have a great evening, guys. Bye. Oh, yeah, it is. It kind of differs for some people, right? Some people might see it as five o'clock or six o'clock. Um, it differs or like eight or something because, you know, time zone differences. Whoa, that was, that was a very interesting hour, Yes, you know? in fact, y'all were in the zone today, guys. You were in the math zone, so, because, you know, time zone joke, but, <laughs> In the okay. pouch of the math kangaroo, I, Yes, I think that's how you could call it, yeah. Whoa. definitely. Yeah, so if you guys haven't left already, there really isn't anything afterwards. So, um, yeah, you guys Unless can you would leave. like, unless you would like to talk to us, you know, that's Yeah. very, very fun to talk to. Trust Yes. you, you definitely um, want to learn more about our very interesting lives. How many people are in the Zoom meeting, actually? I cannot tell. Oh, my. Cool. All right. So um, please feel free to leave. You know, time is, you know, we've reached, unfortunately, the end of our allotted time today. Um, but do keep an eye out, right? Because I'm sure we have a lot of fun lives, other life solves coming up. other live solves coming up so yes yeah in fact we have a math kangaroo i think 2022 stream right or no 2020 stream right um for another day so scheduled for may 5th so you guys can pop over to that one right um on may 5th but we don't have any more for today so yeah Yahoo! We're just waiting for Miss Lee to end this off now, I think. Yes. But if you Uh. would Is it? like to hear more about our live courses, I would we would be very happy to um help you out. Is this the part where we break the fourth wall and talk about how um people have been guiding us in Discord the whole time? I think... I think the Uh last four people here, uh, maybe that would be unprofessional, though. You know, we have to be very Maybe. professional here. Yes. Yeah. Because we're pros at being professional. Um, yeah, so I feel like I feel like something is contradictory, but that's fine. That's fine. Whoa. No, that was that was interesting. Yes.
Um, and I'm sure if you guys really want to, you know, check it out live, I'm sure there's like a link somewhere in like the YouTube area or something, somewhere. Like in our YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel, there should be like a link to the live thing. Um, go to live, guys. Take our courses. We're amazing. Wait, so is this your second class or your first one? Or because I think Miss Lee mentioned that you did like one class before this. I don't know. Yeah, I finished my, I finished like my uh, class, right? And then I've done subbing before, but I've only done like one class, really. Oh, cool. So I'm actually not old enough to do it, do that yet. So, you know, I'll just be like subbing Wait, how old classes. are you then? Wait, no, actually, we probably shouldn't say that yet. Oh, But yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, no, yeah. no Probably personal not. information. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can just like chat in this. I can just chat in the discord. <sighs> Wait, hold up. And Wait, you're what? an offer? Oh, uh, yeah. Wait, Like, that's crazy. What the heck? um, Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of lucked out last year, but Wait, I like got like, in November? uh, like, wait, huh? Wait, like, okay, like 2023 or like, you mean like 2022? No, like I went to mop in 2023, so yeah, So you and qualified then, last, you qualified in 2022 then, right? uh, I qualified like March 2023 because that was when. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was when JMO happened, so. That's Well, crazy, dude. What yeah. the heck? I Wait. mean. They're like really smart guys at my school, but they haven't, they haven't mopped yet. Oh, I mean, do you know, um, Bro, you're cracked. <laughs> I mean, like, thanks, but I'm not really. Uh, do you know Lurchin? I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name, but. Um, well, I know he's like really good at math, but I don't know him like personally. Oh, you, you should, like, try to, like, get in contact with him. He's a really nice guy. I mean, like, Lurchin was, like, my no the number one person I hung out with at MOP. So, you know, it was interesting. I mean, like, we had the same class and everything, so I would just, like, sit next to him. And, like, Wait, you guys went he... to the same school? Wait, wasn't, isn't Lurton in Texas? uh, Yeah, but, like, he made MOP 2023 as well. So, Oh, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, we were both there. So, like, that was very cool. But wait, Like... are you going to Armel? Uh, you guys are going to Iowa though, right? Yeah, are you, which one No, are you going to? we, we have a Alabama side, like there's an Alabama Oh. side. So yeah, we're going to that. Oh, okay. Oh no. I've always like, I, I've like, I've asked Lurchin if he can get somehow the, like the Texans to go to Alabama instead. Like I, I searched it up like on Google maps and it's like 50 kilometers It would be closer, closer. right? Yeah, it would be closer. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Which Maybe, is sad. maybe it's, you know, maybe sometimes it's not the distance, but the journey it takes. Yeah. I, like, you guys have been Like, doing that for, like, years now, right? Like. yeah, I think, so. wait, this is actually my first time on Armel, but I think Oh. it's been, yeah. Yeah. But... <sighs> I mean. Fun stuff. But, yeah. I don't know if I answered the question, but I'm not going. Because, Oh, you you're know. not? Yeah. Although, like, I kind of screwed up, like, the past two years I went. So, like, I never placed well, which is pretty sad. By But place I'd like... well, is that, like, is your definition not top 10 or something? Uh, I mean, like, usually whatever the highest score is, minus one, I guess. Like, like getting, getting, like, a tie for first would be amazing. But, you know, that's just not happening realistically. So, like, anything that's, like, decent, I don't know. Whoa. Do you have any, like, goal for, uh, do you call it armal or ARML or? Armel, Armel, definitely Oh. Armel. Wait, do you call it like Amy or AIME? Amy, it, it rolls off the tongue better. Do you call it AOPS or AOPS? AOPS? Wait, what I'm do you going call it? to, I'm going to commit crimes. I, I call it AOPS, AIME, ARML. Oh. Well, that's fine, right? Each their own, so. I mean, I just find, like, AOPS 
better to pronounce than like AOPS because that's to me that's kind of like a mouthful. Yeah, I don't know. I there should be like uh like USAMTS, do you call that USAMPS or I actually don't know what that is. Oh, it's like uh you can actually make do you call it USAMO or USAMO? USAMO. Okay, that that's that that's normal at least. So you can actually make uh USAMO through like USAMTS. It's like the USA math talent search. So they actually do like proofs. And I think this year Oh, if okay. you got a Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the end of the conversation. I I I am not good at proofs. Oh. I know. Yeah. I it's Wait, I I I mean could do like easy ones, but I don't think I yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think you could do it. I think anyone can do it. It's not it's not the worst, you know. It's not terrible. I've done I've done power rounds. Um long story short, they didn't go very well. So Uh, oh, uh, wait, um, is Debbie or Miss Lee, like, coming back yet, or, uh, a very good question um wait let me let me display her oh, people are in the waiting room now, like, we're the only ones here. yeah Yeah, so wait, my I have a friend whose favorite emoji is a skull emoji. Like it's crazy. So yeah, like I swear if you talk to her for like at least one minute or like two minutes, a skull emoji will pop up eventually. It's it's crazy. Oh. Wait, that's literally just me. Uh oops. I I think like yeah, it's let me check what my most used one is actually. Oh, what? So these are my 10 frequently used. Let me let me this 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 that 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 that. Wait, I feel like the one that I use the most is like the sweat smile one. You know, like that, like the one with like the smile and like the sweat coming down. Oh, like that, wait, the, this one? Yeah, that one. Wait, so what are your top 10? Or like, Okay, this is top so. 10? Oh, this is top 11. Okay, wait, Um, I actually. Let's see, let me pull it up really quickly. Um, oh wait, I also use like this one a lot, right? This one. I also use, yeah, I also use this one a lot. So, I don't know. Wait, I feel like your top 10 emojis can really define or like kind of, kind Yeah. of like outline of who you are. So. Yeah, I was about to say that. Like, I don't actually use the, uh, the like, heart stuff too much. I don't know. Like, Oh, I actually, I actually do. oh. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's, like, the top emoji here, though, which is interesting. And also this. What is this? Why? I've never seen this. Why is Yeah. this Oh, a thing? it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of cute. It's also kind of quick. Wait, like like this one? <laughs> hugging? This is not hugging. I mean, I don't know. Is that, wait, there are like some emojis that I have absolutely no idea of what they do or what they mean, right? Or like, what is the context? Like when you use them, what context do you need to be able to use them? Fax. Like there's there's that one emoji, which like, it's a smiling emoji, right? But then there's the other emoji with Yeah. like really big eyes, like oval eyes, right? And then it's smiling. Yeah, like that one, yeah. And I have no idea, like, is is that different from like the normal smile emoji? I mean, like, it's just kind of, like, creepy. I don't know. And then this Wait, is this. wait, wait, I can see that. I can see the creepiness. And then this one, and then, like, oh, this one exists, wait. And then some of my friends like to post this one, because, you know. Oh, camera's off.
Oh, okay. I will just like do that. Ugh. 